Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of the romantic books. So I wanted to make a Valentine's Day themed video, so I figured what better time of year to talk about my favorite romances and books, not necessarily romance books, but books that have romances in them that I love. Also, because Valentine's Day doesn't have to be all about the couple-y stuff, there's also some stuff in here where I just really love the family love or the friendship love. All of the love all of the love. The majority of these books are just happy, feel-good books that you can read on Valentine's Day. Have a smile on your face, have a good day. Some of them are a little bit heavier. I debated whether I wanted to include those in this video, but they're some of my favorite books, so I will specify whether it's a happy, feel-good book or a you might cry, but you'll probably like it. I'll have all the books linked down below in the description if you want to go check any of them out. Obviously, I would highly recommend all of them. I would love if you would leave down below in the comments some recommendations of books that you love that have good romances, good friendships, good family relationships, any of that kind of stuff. And thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Ana Luisa is an online jewelry company that is all about sustainability, quality, environmental consciousness, and also affordability. All of their pieces are extremely high quality and will last you a lifetime, but they're also way more reasonably priced than most really high quality jewelry pieces. They're actually having a big Valentine's Day promotion right now. So make sure to go check them out because the sale ends on February 10th and you can get 15% off site-wide. If you guys recognize these earrings, I've been wearing them non-stop almost all year. I got them last year from Ana Luisa. They're my favorite earrings that I own. I also recently picked up this gold necklace that pairs very well with my earrings. As you can tell, I'm more of a gold jewelry kind of person. And then I also got these two rings. This one has a really pretty blue stone and then this one is just like a braided gold band. I have a really hard time finding rings because I have kind of chubby fingers, which is really annoying because I love rings. So the only ring that I constantly wear is one that my parents got me when I was like 16 years old because it's a really nice ring so I could get it sized properly and everything. And then I also hate really cheap rings that like turn your fingers colors and stuff like that. So I really, really like these new ones from Ana Luisa. They're really great quality. They're not going to turn my fingers green and they actually fit my chubby little fingers. I'll have a link down below in the description if you want to go check them out. Maybe gift yourself something for Valentine's Day. No shame in doing that. I totally did that last year if you watched my college vlogs. Or if you want to gift them to someone else. This is totally something that I could see myself giving to my mom. So yeah, make sure to shop them before February 10th if you want to get their Valentine's Day discount. And without further ado, let's get straight into the book recommendations. Should we start with the lighthearted ones or should I just rip off the band-aid and give you the ones that are going to break your heart first? Let's start with the ones that will destroy your soul because I don't know sometimes I'm just like in the mood for something that's gonna make me cry now I'm picturing you all like reading one of these books that I recommended to you on Valentine's Day crying like eating ice cream or something and it's my fault if you end up doing that just like DM me on Instagram or something so the first one I'm gonna recommend is it ends with us by Colleen Hoover if you've read this book you're probably thinking wow Katie this is a really weird choice for this video and you're right I almost didn't include it but this is one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books especially more on the romance side you guys know I love Verity but that's more of a thriller so it Ends With Us is her most well done one in my opinion. I think Colleen Hoover is pretty well known for writing toxic and problematic relationships. This one does not have that whatsoever. And I know a lot of people don't like to talk about the actual subject matter because they think it spoils the book, but I feel like you should know going into it that it does deal with abusive behavior. So if that's something that's going to trigger you, wouldn't recommend reading this, but I feel like it's so well done. It's such an accurate portrayal of this kind of situation and it's a really, really beautiful story of different kinds of love other than just romantic love. I think it's really well done. Would highly recommend this book. I was definitely high key sobbing at the end of this book. I'm trying, oh my god, how to not spoil this book in a good way. That's all I'm going to say. You're crying in a good way at the end. We're following our main character, Lily. She has recently graduated from college she moved to Boston and she started her own business a flower shop and she gets into a new relationship with a neurosurgeon and his name is Ryle I don't know R-Y-L-E <laughs> Ryle. Just saying his name makes me sound like I have like a southern accent. He's this like stubborn arrogant guy who has a soft spot for Lily and he has a no dating rule. Every red flag out there. But she's like real into him. I think the fact that he's a neurosurgeon doesn't hurt. And then she finds herself becoming the exception to his no dating rule. And then things get complicated when her former love Atlas, another really weird name, comes back into her life. I feel like the summary of this book doesn't really do it justice so if you watch my videos, I hope that means you trust my opinion and you'll take my word on this one. That it's just a really good book and I think it's really worth your time. But don't read this one if you're just looking for something real happy and cutesy. We'll get to one of those soon, I promise. So next, I want to recommend Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is a young adult fantasy retelling of Alice in Wonderland. It's the origin story for the Queen of Hearts. So is it technically a romance novel? No. Is the romance in this book my absolute favorite thing about this book? Yes. 
I give this book a five out of five stars. It's my favorite Alice in Wonderland retelling. It's one of my all-time favorite books. It's so freaking good. But the reason why I'm pairing this with It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover is because it's not a feel-good happy ending kind of book which you know going into it so I feel like that's not a spoiler because it's about the Queen of Hearts who you know turns into a villain. So obviously something has to go wrong in her story. I enjoyed this so much I would really recommend listening to the audiobook of this one. If you're a fan of Alice in Wonderland I feel like you'll really like all of the little references to it throughout the story. I love how well she humanized this villain like I cared about her so freaking much. I wanted her to succeed so much but you just know she's not going to so it's like watching a train wreck because you're just waiting to see where is it gonna go wrong? So our main character, Catherine, she goes by Kath. All she wants is to be a baker and to open her own bakery with her best friend. And her mom's not having it. So if you like baking, I also think you really like this book. And later, Kath goes on to meet the court joker named Jest. I've been saying this since this book came out. Like, when did this book come out? In 2016. I've been saying this for four years. I want a prequel book just about Jest's life. And this is coming from me. You guys know I hate spin-off series. I hate reading from a side character's point of view. Oh man, I hate especially reading from the love interest's point of view because it always skews my perception of them. But man, I would read the hell out of a book about Jest. I love him. I love the relationship in this book. It's so freaking cute. So if you're looking for a romance but you like fairy tale retellings and fantasy as well, would highly recommend this one. I think the relationship is adorable, but Brace yourself. The rest of my recommendations are not heavy. They're a good time. Some of them are kind of like trashy, guilty pleasure reads. So we've got a good variety. So first I want to talk about Can You Keep a Secret by Sophie Kinsella. This is an adult romance and there was a movie adaptation of it. I watched it kind of recently and the movie wasn't super awesome, but I think the book is really cute. So I would definitely recommend reading the book over watching the movie. So we're following our main character, Emma, and she's on this plane ride that's experiencing like really bad turbulence and she is super, super freaked out, also kind of drunk. And so she just starts spouting off all of her deepest, darkest secrets to this strange man sitting next to her, like very intimate, private details about herself. She thinks he's a complete stranger, isn't really concerned about it. Turns out he's not a complete stranger. He ends up being the CEO of the company that she works for. <laughs> super awkward, as you can imagine, very funny romance ensues from there. Highly enjoyed this one. It's just a really fun time. It's been a really long time since I've read it, but just know because it's an adult romance, I believe there are more like graphic sex scenes in here than the YA books I'll be recommending. But yeah, I had a really fun time with this one. If you're looking for a laugh, I think this is a good option. The next book I'm going to recommend is The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Gu. I actually have a full book review of this video up on my channel. I'll put a card for it up there. This was back when I actually did like individual book reviews for books. And I gave this a five out of five stars, which is very rare for me to give a YA contemporary novel a five out of five stars, just because it's not really a genre I tend to enjoy lot. This one is super super fun. This is a great example because I feel like it has a cute romantic relationship but it also really dives into more familial relationships as well and also there's like friendships and stuff but also kind of coming to an understanding with people that you don't like. You know kind of redeeming the mean girl characters. I always appreciate that. So our main character's name is Clara. She lives with her dad. Her mom's just kind of been AWOL her whole life. She's a social media influencer and she's constantly traveling and so she has plans to go on this big vacation with her mom but then gets into really big trouble at the end of the school year by pulling a prank and her father essentially grounds her for the summer saying you can't go on your trip instead you have to stay here and work in my food truck. She's now working side by side with a classmate who she absolutely hates in her dad's food truck all summer. So we're getting the relationship developed between these two girls. There's also a boy. Also the relationship with her and her dad, the relationship with her and her mom. Just overall a very heartwarming story. I really really enjoyed this one. Also the love interest's name in this book is Hamlet. Why is the love interest name in every romance book so freaking weird? Next we're going to talk about a book that I read just last month actually which is called A Quick Bite by Lindsay Sands. This is an adult paranormal romance book and this was so trashy and so fun and so fast. I read it in like a day. Basically we're following our main character. God what is her name? I literally just filmed my January wrap up and I couldn't remember her name in that video either. It's like Lysiandra. She goes by Lissy okay. She's 200 years old. She's a vampire. She faints at the sight of blood. She's terrified of it can't handle blood, obviously kind of makes it difficult for her to be able to feed then. So her mom tries to hire this doctor to help cure her phobia by basically kidnapping him, strapping him to her bed and leaving him there as a birthday present. This book is super silly and has a really funny writing style. So if you're looking for a laugh and also some fun smut, just like a trashy book that you can't take too seriously, but it's a really fun ride. It's a romance between Lissy, the 200 year old vampire and the doctor who's trying to cure her phobia. It's the first book in a series of like 27 books, 
but if you're looking for a vampire romance, I had a really fun time with this one. We're not even halfway through my list yet. Oh my gosh. Next, I'm gonna recommend The Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. This is a YA contemporary romance as well about two chronically ill kids. I read this one at the end of last year and I had so much fun with this. I found this so cute and heartwarming and wholesome. Basically our main character has rheumatoid arthritis and her father is like the chief of surgery at a hospital. And she ends up meeting a boy at the hospital who also has a chronic illness that she's never heard of before. And the two just kind of start becoming friends because she has this no dating rule. I feel like that's a really common trope in books now too is all these people have no dating rules. Do people in real life really have no dating rules? I feel like if you don't wanna date, you don't need to make a rule about it. You just don't go on dates. Anyway, I thought this book was really, really cute. As an own voices author, as someone who also has a chronic illness, I found it very well done. It was handled really well. It was super relatable. And it was nice to see these two kids connecting over just understanding something that no one else really understands. And also how being a sick person doesn't have to be a bad thing or something that needs to be fixed. People just live their lives a little bit differently than healthy people do. And no one dies in this one. It's not like a super tragic thing like a lot of the sick kid books are. I really enjoyed this one, would highly recommend. Next, I'm gonna recommend The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. If you like the hate to love, enemies to lovers kind of thing, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Don't go into this hoping for a healthy relationship. It's toxic as hell but very steamy for YA at least. But I personally had a really fun time watching this relationship progress. It's a trilogy about fairies and fae. And one of our main characters, Jude, is a mortal who was kidnapped by a fairy and grew up in the fairy world. And I binge read the heck out of these books last year. I had so much fun with them. I know this is a series that people either love or hate. So take that with a grain of salt. It's not parading around as a healthy relationship. It's very clearly messed up. But if that's gonna bother you, then I wouldn't read it. But I personally had a lot of fun reading it. Next, I'm gonna recommend A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone. This is another adult romance. This one is probably the most graphic of all the ones I'm going to be recommending today. Basically, we're following our main character, Poe. She's a librarian and she goes back to the estate of this boy who she grew up with. And I think they're on like the English countryside along with a bunch of their other childhood friends. They're all back at this house together as adults. And Poe is doing this research and she finds some stuff about some weird rituals that people used to do on the property. And the friend group decides that they want to do it. And essentially it's like an orgy in the woods. So very strange, but the writing I really enjoyed. I think the writing style is really good. It's a very atmospheric and kind of creepy book. I think I read this in October and it was a very like Halloween-esque kind of vibe. I definitely don't recommend reading the sequel because the sequel is one of my least favorite books of last year, but this first book I really enjoyed. I gave it a four out of five stars. Very different from anything else that I've read for sure. Next I'm going to recommend Easy by Tamara Weber. This is a new adult romance, which I guess I probably should have included this at the beginning with the more heavy subject matter. This one really tackles rape culture and victim blaming. It's set in college where our main character gets sexually assaulted in the very first chapter of the book. So just be aware that that kind of sets the tone for the story, but that there is a much more consensual and enjoyable relationship to read about later in the book. Honestly, this is one of the most well done new adult romances that I've read. I thought it was really well done. Definitely worth the read. And then I also have a couple of Christina Lauren books to recommend to you. Honestly, probably any of their books would be a safe bet. The first one is Autobiography. This is a YA contemporary romance about two gay kids falling in love in a predominantly Mormon town. And one of them is writing about their love story for a class where they have to write a novel. And it's a very fine line that they have to walk of you know respecting his beliefs and his religion and him coming to terms with the fact that he likes other boys and then also our other main character isn't Mormon so he's kind of already the odd guy out in this community. I thought this one was really well done, very touching, very heartwarming. And then the other Christina Lauren book that I'm going to recommend is an adult romance which is The Unhoneymooners. This is another kind of like rom-com vibe, very comedic writing style. Our main character Olive is a twin and her twin sister is getting married but when everyone else at the wedding ends up getting food poisoning except for Olive and the best man who is her like arch nemesis the two end up pretending to be her twin sister and his brother so that they can go on the honeymoon together even though they absolutely hate each other another hate love romance i had a really fun time with this one it's not my favorite romance novel i've ever read i think it gave it a four out of five stars but it's still a very fast read definitely something that you can read in one sitting and then the last book that i'm going to be recommending today is called love and gelato i almost didn't include this one because i only gave this a three out of five stars it's definitely not my favorite it's a young adult contemporary romance but i could easily see a lot of other people enjoying this 
this way more than I did, which is why I'm including it on this list. Very summery, very cutesy. Our main character, Lena, is spending the summer in Italy. We do have quite the sad start. Lena's mother recently passed away and wants Lena to go get to know her father, which is why she's going to spend the summer in Italy. But I really like this one because we do have a romance between her and a boy named Ren, but then we also have her growing relationship with her father, but then also her kind of getting to know her mother through traveling to the different places that her mom went to when she was studying abroad there. So I think it's got some good family relationships in here. It does have a cute romantic relationship and then also fun if you're into traveling and stuff like that. So yeah, those are all the books that I'm going to be recommending today. Hopefully one of these interests you or you found something that sounds like you might enjoy it. I'll have links to all of the books down below in the description if you want to go check them out. Make sure to leave any recommendations that you have down below in the comments. I would love to see them. And make sure to check out that link to Ana Luisa down below in my description if you want to pick up some jewelry for yourself or for a loved one. And make sure to do it before February 10th if you want to get their Valentine's Day promotion for 15 percent off. Said all of that in one breath. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an awesome day. If you're new here, maybe think about subscribing. I put up at least two to three new videos every single week and I would love to have you stick around. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up because it helps out my channel a lot and all my links are down below in the description. But other than that, I think I'll just see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye. So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With